it's the Browns, 20 to 13. I can remember getting ready for the kickoff, and in my mind, I'm thinking about plays that you know we can run uh, from our own 20, and and so I kind of have an idea of what plays you want to run, and all of a sudden they kick off. All right, here's Mosley's kickoff. It's a floater that hits at the 15, skips inside the five. It's all the way back in the two. The Broncos can't cover it, and now they do it the one-yard line. A big mistake by the Denver Broncos. And the Broncos are 98 yards away from where they need to go. Actually, it's not even at the two. No, nope. about the one and a half. We're down two yard line and everyone's I'm sure everyone was sitting there thinking, you know, this is over. I mean we're in we're in deep trouble. There was never a moment in my mind where it was, boy, we've got this right where we want it. You're still in the contest and there's still time to go. They had it in hand with five minutes to go and the Broncos at their own one and a half yard line. Certainly advantage Cleveland in that circumstance. It sure looked like there was no way the Broncos were gonna beat the Browns that day. And by the time that they got back there, the ball was dead at the two-yard line, and all they could do would be to cover it. You may have just seen the straw that broke the Broncos back. I thought it was all over. I had left the visiting owner's box and come down to the field just about the time they kicked off. And, and you know, when I saw the ball on the two-yard line, oh my God, you know. First of all, we're never going to get out of our, our own end zone. All seemed lost after the kickoff was fumbled, and it was down on the two-yard lines, 98 yards away. You're heading toward the dog pound. All of those things, the bad weather, it just, it just all came together in that, in that uh, uh, one segment of the game. Well, the fat lady hasn't sung yet, but you can believe she's in the wings warming up the pipes. I don't know if there was a fear or an intense confidence uh, in my eyes, and when you looked around the huddle, I think everyone had a confidence in them, but it was, it was mixed with just enough fear to make us play well. We know we have to make a drive, and we have to put some points on the board. It's, it's total concentration, and I, and I can remember the only thing that has kind of uh, gone down in the history books was Keith Bishop saying. I just said to the other offensive linemen, the people in the huddle, you know, we had them right where we wanted them. And then the huddle set, and you can see this confidence in John eyes as he began Tiger. to instruct us Tiger, Tiger. on what the first play would be as we started the drive. I got to tell you something right now, gentlemen. 534 left in the ball game. The Browns defense has done it all game long. It's now up to them to get that ball back, and we're history. Pocket, pocket, set hut. Land 98. Let's see what happens here as this one ticks down to its final moment. Johnson right, Johnson left. Elway in the end zone and throwing it. It's complete. Winder dives out to the seven yard line. Picks up a little operating room there. People forget the key play right there was the first play because now you're not backed up in your end zone. You've got some room to operate. Ball at the seven. He tried to get out of bounds. The official says he didn't make it there, and that keeps the clock running. And that, of course, is exactly what Cleveland wants. They lead 20 to 13. Still five minutes to go. Broncos have time, but they need something out of this drive. Vance Johnson's in motion, reverses the motion, and the pitch is to Winder. Winder coming to the right, cuts to the 10 yard line, and the Broncos will have third down and about two. Uh, spot the ball a little short of the 10 yard line. No shotgun. Denver with a third and two at the nine. Sewell in motion from the H. Give the ball to Winder and Sammy into the middle, driving, and he should just about have the first down at the 12-yard line. 4-11 left. I think it's a first down. 20-13 to 13 in favor of Cleveland. Ball's length. Stretch out the chain. Denver has the first down. Well, that's step number one. They needed that one. That was a very important play, and I remember when it unfolded, I thought, gosh, you know, that was really a great opportunity lost. Broncos are 12 and 0 when they score 20. Now they have to score 20 just to get a tie. Receivers left. Two tight ends and Winder. Ray 98. Ray 98. Johnson in motion. Handoff. Winder and Winder bangs to the left side, but to the 15-yard line. About a three-yard gain. We seem to not make a whole lot of progress, and the clock was running down. Clock is running again with three minutes and 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And the Browns thinking about Pasadena. Elway's drop, the play fake, runs up in the pocket. Running left, 
John's across the 20 and out to the 26 yard line as the first down. Now that's where John Elway can do it on his own. The other thing is you got to make him do it and punish him every time that he takes off like that. But with uh, two minutes and 51 seconds and the clock running, Elway can run at six or seven yards a clip all the rest of the day and it won't matter. And they're still at their own 25 yard line. Will Height and Sewell are the running backs. Mitchell the H back. Elway to pass on first down. The pass for Sewell. Got it and keeps it at the 48 yard line. And was he hammered? Elway threaded the needle for 22 yards and the chains keep moving first down. That was the best throw that Elway has put in the air in this ball game. He had it right on the money and Sewell was wide open in that soft middle of the Browns coverage. It was called Fire Pass 94 and I had the option either to go to the corner or to the post and ran down the field and I saw that the safeties were split so I ran, decided to go to the post and John didn't quite get it as much to the middle as I would have liked because I wouldn't have gotten hit that way but I had to go up and get the ball and get hit right right as I caught it. First down Denver at their 48 with 2.17 to go. Come on guys, come on, stick it going baby, stick this it This one's going to go down uh, to the two minute warning. Broncos will probably get one more play here. They move from their own two. Still Sewell and Wilhite. Elway's drop and the pass this time is caught at the 40 yard line in Cleveland territory. Caught by Steve Watson. First down Broncos at the Browns 40. With each successful play, and each time we moved the markers, we became more confident. And we're down to the two-minute warning, actually 159, but another first down for the Broncos, who have taken their ball, the ball from their own one and a half to the Cleveland 40. Two minutes to go, Cleveland leading 20 to 13. And it's time for the crowd to take over. Denver suddenly took command not only of the football game, but of the stadium. And the closer they got, I thought the quieter the crowd got. Where it should have been getting louder, and the Cleveland defense was out there, uh, you know, telling the crowd or asking them to help, uh, I don't think it did. I, I really think that the crowd was quieted somewhat during that drive just by the fact that Denver kept moving the ball down close. Well, the crowd should get into this one, folks. Don't sit back in apprehension. Start cheering because right now is when you can help rattle John Elway. Cleveland really does have the advantage here but uh, at the moment the Broncos at least are still alive with two timeouts remaining a minute 59 to go. Send the receivers to the left stay with Sewell and Wilhite two of their better receivers in the backfield as Elway runs up in the pocket and throws it and throws it and it is incomplete for Vance Johnson inside the five yard line. Come on Johnny! 152 remaining. The Broncos have two timeouts. Second and ten. Elway reaches under center, goes back to throw. Elway under pressure, and down he goes. Elway is sacked at the 49-yard line by Dave Pizzoli. A nine-yard loss, and Paz gets his seventh sack of the season and his biggest one. All right, the Broncos, Jim, have just called timeout, and they're down to one remaining. That's why that was even a bigger play, because they lose nine yards. Now they are faced with a third and 18. They had to use a timeout to stop the clock. They are 2 of 13 in the third down conversion department. We used a timeout after that situation, and Dan really told me that, uh, you know, we, we get two downs to get 18 yards. The magic carpet ride is still airborne, but not without some turf. Yeah. We did have the perfect defense. We had four men rushing. We have five guys playing man to man underneath with two safeties on the top. A trip to Pasadena could boil down to this play, although you got to think that the Broncos will not punt. They'll go for it. It's a two down territory and time of the game for sure. The entire season now hangs in the balance. In the shotgun, Watson in motion, snap to Elway, and Elway's pass is coming and caught inside the 30-yard line. Mark Jackson is driven back, but his forward progress will be a first down at the 27th. Once John called the play, I knew it, and I believe in his heart, he knew it, that I was going to be his primary read. I was going to be the guy that was going to catch the ball. So for the first catch of the day, it was a pretty good catch. When you see it, be sure you examine the events that transpire from the snap till John getting the ball in his hand. 
in too many situations where you got to get lucky and there's no question we were lucky on this situation uh, because it was the crowd was so loud uh, that we were in a si silent cadence and I had motion with it and I was trying to time the motion with the silent count and we were just a little bit early with the snap and it hit Steve Watson on the, on the hip. Watson in motion, the snap hit him. Elway back to throw. John makes an excellent athletic maneuver just to handle the snap. Had Watson been two inches in either direction or had it not been a guy like John, you know, even if they get the ball back, it's fourth down and 30 or 30, whatever it might be. But Jackson got in behind him and made the catch that ultimately produced the first down. At that point, I became concerned. It's something, something that was going to be labeled great was happening here. I, I think we sensed it even at the time. Elway with a drop and throws it to the near side over Watson and out of bounds, kills the clock. The Broncos have moved the ball again from a drive that started after a badly mangled kickoff return attempt. They started inside their two, and they are now at the Cleveland 28. That's where the ball is spotted, and they have a second down and 10, down seven points. Got the ball back with 5.43 to go, and they've kept it ever since then. We're down to a minute 19. Still in the shotgun. The snap. Elway's drop, the late pressure, throws the screen, and Sewell, 30, 25, down the sidelines, 20, cuts back inside, gets inside the 15, first down Broncos at the 14-yard line with 105 to go. It was a screen, halfback screen left. That was a point where we were actually in our two-minute offense, so every time we were in the huddle, we called two plays. So whenever you run the first play, you get as many yards as you can. You don't have to worry about getting out of bounds because you have two plays called. After that first play, you get right back and line up and run the second play. And so uh, we ran the screen. It opened up. I was able to cut and saw that I could have gone out of bounds early, but I figured I can get about five or six more yards and tried to do that. And knowing that we had two plays called, got tackled, and then got back to the line of scrimmage to run the second play. No timeout. Ball at the 14-yard line. Broncos have one timeout left. Still in the shotgun. Elway throwing it to the near side for Watson, out of bounds. Boy, Watson had Minifield with him all the way and went up for the ball, but had no real chance at catching it inbounds. That stops the clock. And we are down to 49 seconds to go. A 20 to 13 Browns lead. They'd come from behind with 10 fourth quarter points, and now they're trying to hang on. Back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10, 14 yard line. Watson in motion, left to right. Snap Elway, running to his right, trying to direct traffic. He's at the 10, John's at the five, and skids out of bounds at the four yard line. He's close to another first down, and the clock is at 42 seconds. Mike Johnson was the babysitter on that play, and he found out just how fast John Elway was. John Elway started to pull away from him. See where they mark him out. You know, his feet slid forward across the marker, but I'm not so sure it's he where got the, the ball first is. down. It's where, it's where the, the ball goes. And the ball was about a yard and a half shy of the first down. Now you're thinking about, you know, we've got to get this thing in there because they were more uh, difficult to score. The closer you got to the goal line and everything got congested, you know, it was really difficult to get the thing in there. 42 seconds to go. Broncos at the Cleveland five. Third down and a yard. Stay in the shotgun. Three receivers to the right. 20 to 13 Browns. Mark Jackson in motion. The snap to Elway. The look, the throw. Touchdown! John Elway has just thrown the touchdown to Mark Jackson. Five yards, 98 and a half yard drive. We call it option left 62 route, but we have a guy in the flat, and we have uh, uh, Mark coming in on a, on a slant route, and, and with Sewell coming out of the backfield, uh, the, the corner came off Mark, and I was able to get a seam in there, and I threw it. It was a low heater, too, because if Mark didn't get it, nobody was going to get it. I can remember seeing Mark Jackson wide open and, and saying to myself, get this ball to him as fast as you can get it to him. And I don't remember throwing the ball as hard as I threw that ball. The fact of the matter is, I was never the guy to catch the ball in that. My whole goal and my whole purpose in that play was to rub, that pick was to rub 
uh, Vance's guy as he ran the shoot route and he was going to catch the ball. I come open on, on the two route, which is a quick slant, and I'm really not expecting the ball. There's a big line between John and I, and all of a sudden I see his eyes just blow up, and he's looking directly at me. And when his arm goes back, I'm thinking, holy smokes, the ball's coming. And as the ball clears some lineman's hand, I see it going to the ground, and I go down, and somehow I get underneath the ball. And uh, when I came up, it was just pure energy. It was incredible. I, I see the ball in my hand. I, at that point, I began to perform what I think was the worst spike in NFL history. And anybody who thought that Mr. Elway was overrated as a quarterback had better think again. And the Broncos, in what must go down as an exceptional performance, have gone 98 yards, and they're on the verge of tying it up with an extra point try coming up by Carlos. Tremendous uh, jubilation. Uh, but then also you're thinking about here we are in the opening of that stadium, and I've seen so many things happening at the end of the stadium. I'm thinking, well, we can't miss this extra point. Now the extra point attempt. I just remember being a little bit more nervous about that because the flying dog bones and the dog pound was in a frenzy and you know they felt like they could turn the game on their own. As a kicker, that would be the ultimate uh, disaster and you know, that's something you'd never live down the rest of your life if you miss the extra point after going 98 yards scoring a touchdown. Ball is down. Carlos's kick. Got it. We're tied. Denver 20. Cleveland 20 with 37 ticks left on the clock. This stunning 98-yard drive not only wrote the comeback legend of John Elway, it propelled one of the NFL's greatest games into overtime.